have clients tell me I've got a three-week, you know, newbie right out of college, rolls right into the CEO's office and is like, now I've got tons of new ideas. I saw all these inefficiencies in our business processes and the computer and like, I think there's a lot of great things we can do to make it better around here. And you're like, who are you again and why are you in my office? And we think, where are you coming from? And the difference is, and this is big, this generation comes in and they do not see the world of work the same way you all do. We don't see the world in the same way. And what I mean by this is, I want you to visualize in your mind for me right now, your organization, the organizational structure of your company, however big or however small. I want you to think about it. I want you to think where you sit in that structure for me. I want you to get that in your mind. And, and if I were to guess, if I could pull out of your head what you're visualizing, I'd be willing to bet it's some version of this image. It's a version of an org chart. It's a version of a hierarchical structure. Now you could say to me, oh, some people say to me, oh, Seth, we don't look anything like that. That's, that's not, we're, we're much flatter than that. And I would say, okay, fair enough. But I would push back and challenge you and say, many times we don't even realize the degree to which this is built into our DNA. This model shows up everywhere. Shows up in our language when we say things like, oh, I think the higher ups will be attending that. Or I need to make sure that we communicate that down. Or we make gestures pointing. We, we live in this diagram. And it's not just work, it's society. You know, it's our government institutions. It's our religious institutions. It's your local nonprofit that you're a part of. Heck, it's your PTA. My sister just called me and said, oh, I'm the vice president of the PTA. They're living in this structure. And I point this out is because there is a whole list of unwritten rules that we've all agreed to when playing in this model. We've all agreed to them. Except now this new generation shows up and they don't see the world like this. And we scratch our heads as to why don't they get it? They don't get it because when they show up, what they see when they think about your organization looks like this. They see a network. They see an interconnected web of people and talent and ideas and information. They see, in essence, what is the intranet. So the more I'm exploring this, because I'm fascinated by this, and I believe that this is the shift of the future of work, and you start to look at, well, what are the, the business gurus and management thought leaders saying? It's someone like a Gary Hamill, who's, who's one of the, the foremost in this space, recently wrote, the underlying principles on the web of natural hierarchy, transparency, collaboration, and the rest, these are the characteristics that will invade management in the coming decades. Okay, so this is what's coming, the, the principles of the web. So my aha moment then, while standing in the shower was, okay, if that's true, then for this generation, the organization, your company, is just a physical manifestation of the virtual world of the web they've been operating in. Their whole world has been built around the web. So of course they're gonna think about your company that way. So you've got these two models then, these two views of the world that start to collide in the workplace. And it's not that either of them are 100% the right way or 100% not, there's a happy medium. And, and what we're taking leadership groups through and what I would challenge you to do is, we, go, we, we break this down and we say, what are the advantages to both of these? Because both have advantages. The right has advantages. Whether it's compliance and consistency, streamlining decision making, you know who to go to for direction. It makes sense. But yet at the same time, it can hold us back in places of innovation and collaboration and knowledge sharing across silos. The idea that great ideas can come from anywhere, those things take place in the network. Now, people will say to me, okay, Seth, great. You, you want to say we're going to move to the network, but that to me looks like total freaking chaos. And where is the leader? Who's in charge? And this is the shift in your mindset. You have to go from a place where the leader now is no longer on the top, they're in the center. And if you think of yourself in the center of your organization, the center of that network, where you still 
take the lead. You still make decisions. You still drive directions. But now people have access. And ideas can get to you. Because as leaders and owners, you want access to the greatest ideas inside your company. You have to unlock them. But we have to change our ethos and our mindset to get there. My closing tip when you're thinking about multiple generations showing up in the world of work is simply this. It's very easy. It's very easy, but it's also very difficult to do. Stop yourself from those knee-jerk reactions of immediately focusing on the negative in the places where we are different and start to see the greatness in another generation. Start to force yourself to say, what amazes me about this generation and how can I pull more out of it instead of focusing on where we're different? The organizations that tap the power and perspective of every single generation because we need all of them. It can't be out with the old, in with the new. For my generation, we cannot do it, traditionalists and baby boomers, without capturing your wisdom, knowledge, and perspective. Those who tap all of that and all of those talents will win in the new world of work. And I'm so glad that as an organization, you've made this a priority to talk about this and start this dialogue and conversation. Remember, it's just simply one lens, but together we are better. Thank you for an awesome morning, everybody. Thank you.